Greetings to everyone. Greetings. 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 Yeah. Always a pleasure to see your faces. So I have been traveling over now about 37 years. I went around the world telling everybody about the environment. You know, we started back in 1970 trying to bring focus on the environment and know what people are in danger to. Well, it's been a long road. No one would listen in the beginning. Everyone thought we were crazy. <laughs> First, I introduced the word, you know, bioenergy to someone back in 1980. They thought I was crazy. There's no such word. And now it's all over the place. See. Let's start with this man, micro, flora, and fauna, a biological concept. That means you affect one, you affect the other. Very simple. Some of us forget about that. Once I spoke to a young lady about the environment, she said, that's up there. I'm down here. Mm -hmm. But we really don't understand how that cycle works. Mm -hmm. You see, if you take something out, it's like a flat wheel, a flat tire. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep everything intact. And you don't think so, and look at the weather today. So we started years ago. I, mean, I remember as a kid, I call it a kid, I was like 27 when I started. And we put backpacks on it. And we went around the world. We asked no one for any money, nothing. We just went, this message has got to get out. You, know, you have to take care of the mother. You know, it's like a spaceship, but it's alive. You don't think the mother is alive. Look at your plants. Once you put them in the ground, they're alive. So she has to it. And we don't get shit it. We just take things for granted so much, so much. I remember my first, my first trip to Texas. I went to Texas and I saw all these poor rigs. So like they were siphoning blood out of the plant. It was so awesome just to see how we mistreat the mother. Without the mother, there's nothing, right? There's no nothing. Now we march. I've had groups, people who march in different cities all over. The all over the country we march with planters. Now a major state is in was without the planet. There's no nothing. You can't fight. You said you can't love. I told the drug dealers they can't sell drugs. You gotta have a planet for everything that you wish, all your dreams. There has to be a planet. Otherwise, you may as well never go get it. And that's the major thing that we try to do. What about this thing called are you ready for As a young boy, I knew that there was something out there. There was always something, if you look hard enough. In my heart, I wanted to have all mankind. There has to be something out there. So I used to start looking, meditating, meditating all those things. I meditated a lot. I wanted to know, but I know there's something out there. Someone told me once before saying, you cry about everything else, but you don't cry about not knowing God. Can you cry for him? Can you cry to know him? We don't do that. We cry about not having a car, not having a good man, not having a good woman, not having a house. We just cry. But do you ever cry because you don't know the one who created you? When you start doing that, then you start getting answers. Mm -hmm. And they start coming. And they keep coming. And you can bear witness. Mm -hmm. This is what it takes. So I started crying. Men don't cry. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm boohooing. <laughs> <laughs> See, I want to know. So when we start boohooing, all these answers start coming. One day, this young, I call him, young gentleman came in my life. You know, I call him a scholar. He came in my life. And he told me. He started teaching me about what is called most people know as the Vedas. The ancient most knowledge known to mankind. And everybody is looking for the secret of the Vedas. You see, the thing with the Vedas, only one third of it is in text. The other you gotta be still in history. You gotta pay them dues. You see? Not all of it is in text. So we had to pay a lot of dues. I've been fortunate enough to have some wonderful, wonderful teachers. Then all to the Himalayas, I've been to Africa, I've been to deep jungles, and I've been taught. I've been to the Teotihuacan in Mexico, the pyramids, we've been taught. 
And as I've gone to these places, they told me, go back and tell them that they got to protect the planet. It's all about the planet. No planet, no nothing. And you got to do it with what? Love. Mm. It's got to be love. You see? I had a uh, professor and a good friend in White Plains, New York. He did an experiment. What his experiment was, he took the light detector test in the machine and he clipped it to a plant. And when he clipped it to a plant, we walk in the room, if you're not full of love, that plant, that thing would just jump all over. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> so if you come in here with love, it's just a smile. So that means that the plant has feelings. It can feel you. So when you're talking to plants, they receive that love. So that's why you heard the saying, I'll talk to the plants, talk to the plants. They receive that love. And when they receive that love, they grow abundantly. Mm -hmm. Abundantly. And so the key always is love. Nothing more powerful than love. Right. Nothing. So that's what we're talking about. I say. In this, this, <laughs> in this journey that we have, this journey what we call life, it's all about love. Yes. You want to know the secret, be full of love. Mm -hmm. All right. When you're full of love, all of it opens up to you. You see? But the universe first has to trust you. If it doesn't trust you, it won't open up to you. All right. You see? I don't care how much you think you know, there's always some more what to learn. Mm -hmm. Always more to learn. Now, how do you go about it? Sometimes you just have to be still and know. Be still, you can know it, you can see it, you can feel it, you can hear it, you can be it, but you gotta be full of love. There's no other way to do that. So, I used to sit, and I 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 sit. And I sit. So one day the universe started opening up. It told me about these betas, and one particular one is Ayurveda. It's four betas, and then those are the Ayurveda. The thing about the Vedas that I like is that there's no author of the Vedas. There's no one that can claim ownership or authorship of the Vedas. Where does it come from? It comes from the seers. The guys just went to sit and the ladies just sit and sit and sit. And they wrote what they heard. They wrote what they had. So who did it come from? Nobody. That's from the cosmos. That's from the cosmos. The Vedas are in what you call Sanskrit language. And I love this one, you know, because the Sanskrit language is the basis of all computers. And most people don't know that. That the vibration that it gives off, it gives off a certain vibration that NASA and all the guys found they could use in computers. So that vibration. So along with that love thing of vibration, everybody knows the universe is full of vibration. Universe, always something moves, nothing stops. Always some type of action going on in the universe. But it creates a vibration. Along with that vibration, also is light. All right. The light is always there. So now when we come to a place where the scientists today, they have figured out how to piggyback that light with sound vibration. And when they did that, they know how to pierce what you call black holes. They figure out how to pierce through them. What the Russian scientists say, the most powerful ones that know how to piggyback that are human beings. Nobody can create a vibration like you can when you're full of love. Mm -hmm. You can do it. But you gotta be full of love. How do we be full of love? One of the things that we talk about and what NASA said, let me get to these guys here. How many of you have seen this book before? It's what uh, over you, climate change impacts in the United States. And this is put out by NASA. And they give them to you freely. People don't know they give them to you freely. Mm -hmm. But they tell you what condition the planet is. Yeah. They put 1,300 climate policies together and they came out and put this report together. And they are begging people what? Mm -hmm. To get them. Mm -hmm. What they are saying is the planet, we have screwed up. That's what they said. It was screwed up. The water is bad, the soil is bad, the air is bad, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they are saying. 
So I implore you, if you can, just go to climatechange.gov or something like that, and they'll pull it up. And they'll send you, well, I know, they know me now. I got so many of them. <laughs> 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 but anyway, on the back of this, it tells you where all the governments got to see us, all the departments have approved what they said. All the apartments, all the apartments. And inside the back of it, they got a different association, like the Lung Association, all these guys saying, this is right on. That we have screwed up. So what they are trying to do is tell you, okay, we screwed up. There's nothing we can do about that. But we can do something by having a rapid response to it. Mm -hmm. I disagree with them. <laughs> I disagree with them. I know there's something we can do about it. That's something that we can do about it. It's called Agni Hotra Home Therapy. Agni Hotra Home Therapy comes from that beta that I was talking about. Inside of that, they give a blueprint how to get through this thing we call life. How to keep your head clean, how to grow good food, how to keep the planet intact, all those different things. One thing most people don't know that the planet is off its axis. It's not rotating like it used to. It's ready to rotate so fast now, you can't even keep up with thinking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you say, I forget something. I forgot this. Young and old, they forget because the planet is rotating so fast. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you gotta take a pause and shift the gear, just take it and shift gear, and you keep up with it. Mm -hmm. It's moving that fast. So these subtle things that are transpiring, we need to understand what they are and how it's affecting us immediately and individually. If you have a polluted atmosphere and you breathe in polluted air, come on. Mm -hmm. yes. No one tell you go right to the, mm -hmm. the brain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. That's just common sense. It goes to the brain. Mm -hmm. So how do you think it affects you? You breathe in 2,500 gallons of what, air a day. Mm -hmm. and it goes here and bam. That's common sense. So what do you do about it? You ask questions. Everybody knows about chemistry, that knew about that. But other things go on in the atmosphere too. If the planet cycle is off, it goes everything off. And the planet cycle is definitely off. Mm -hmm. There's no water on this planet, big body of water that's safe. Mm -hmm. All the major water zones are what? Got dead zones where nothing grows, nothing. A lot of water on the ground has been contaminated. Different things you go and get drugs and put them in your body, you know, aspirins, all those things, they don't all disappear in your body. Mm -hmm. Some of them go in the sewer. Then they go into the ground. Mm -hmm. All these things you have to consider when you're talking about growing plants, farming, and those different types of things. Yep. Remember in the beginning I said, Man, flora, fauna, you see? A micro, a biological concept. Everything affects everything, you see? If you eat the food that you plant, you know, you know it tastes so good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you put that sweat in that love mm -hmm. and it, it tastes so good? <laughs> That's the way we want all food to come. In a place like uh, Peru, down in Peru and Venezuela, they used to have problems with what they call a and the environment like a, a black spot that they couldn't get off the plants. They couldn't get it off. So they asked us to come in, some of my colleagues and myself come in, with this little thing called agriculture. You know, come in. And they had some other guys come in, the big, you know, big corporate guys come in. The big corporate guys here, their guys, we had like six years old, seven years old. You know, we brought them in. You see? And we, it's amazing. When we got through with the crops, the secret token of the grotto was done. We saved the company, uh, the country economy and everything just by introducing this little technique. See, this simple little technique of agriculture. Now, agriculture is based on the circadian rhythm of nature, of sunrise and sunset. At sunrise and sunset, the different things happen to you. Uh, most of us don't even know that they happen. Sunrise and sunset, both of your nostrils are automatic. So you're going to see tremendous power for the cosmos. You have nothing to do with it. 
that's the gift that's given to you. Now you inhale the one nostril and exhale the other nostril. That's happening now. You see? Even when you're on one side, is positive, one side is negative. So sometimes when, you, when people, I always talk to my wife, you know, something like that. Sometimes you, you argue and you fuss. Or she brings it, it's not, let me turn the other side. <laughs> so you change that energy, that positive negative energy, then everything is okay. You see, like that, we exhale into this, and she's in heaven, I said, oh, we're good. But when we both exhale into that, it's not good. <laughs> so, I mean, these things happen to you automatically without you knowing about this. If I'm going to make this journey through life, let me know about this. There's nothing I can't do once I understand what this, the most powerful tool on the planet is this. And we know so little about it. Mm -hmm. We're so little about it. We entrust it to other people. Where are you going to go in the hospital? Mm -hmm. You going to mm -hmm. see a doctor? What are you going to do when you go in that door? Total surrender? Mm -hmm. You're going to give it up? Mm -hmm. We need to understand how this works. And how this is connected with the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are connected with mm -hmm. the cosmos. Every time a windstorm comes, it affects you. Mm -hmm. When the heat shines on you a lot, it affects you. This you need to understand. This is you. This is you. With this little pyramid, everybody knows about pyramid energy? You heard about pyramid energy? No, I don't. The pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Pyramid energy. This is a copper pyramid. What they found out is this pyramid energy creates tremendous amounts of energy, tremendous amount of power. They call it tachyon energy. Called what? Tachyon. 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 Yeah. When it's turned upside down, most of us are familiar with them like this. You know, the Egypt thing like that, the Egypt like this. So that's supposed to be holding energy going down, preserving different copies and all that stuff. Sort of that's what it's about, preserving that energy. Like that. And it had to do with these different ridges. Like that. Like that. It changed at different ridges. Pyramid means fire in the middle. Most people don't even know that. <coughs> they just say pyramid. They don't know that it means, actually means fire in the middle. In the science that we do, or in Vedic, what we do is turn it up, and we actually put a fire in the middle. Mm -hmm. We follow the rules. The rules they put in fire in the middle, we put in fire in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, but what we do when we do that, it's all based on the circadian rhythm of nature. At exactly the time the sun rises and sets, there is a certain way the sun strikes the Earth's atmosphere. It purifies everything in its movement. Mm -hmm. It just wham, it just starts purifying everything. And it happens twice a day. It happens in the morning. Happened in the sunset. 